Hello. Hi, everyone. Hope everything's coming through okay. Hope you can see and hear me fine. I'm going to do some uh, logic puzzling in Turing machine. That, hey, if you're into your logic puzzles, it's pretty fantastic. We're going to need internets and things, though. All sorts of screens around us. You don't necessarily need, need, need it. But, uh, yeah, this is a, an, a punch card computer. Uh, a puzzle game that comes in the rule book with 20 puzzles. It doesn't sound like a lot, but the assumption of you know, the game is that you will go on their website where millions of combinations. There is a, a puzzle every day uploaded, the, the daily challenge that everyone can compete with. Uh, and as it says, millions of combinations of puzzles are on that website. They give you the code so you can uh, you know, share the code with friends and see if they can compete faster and you'll see the code come up actually on the screen so whether you want to like i don't know if live tab out and see if you can beat uh what i do about it or if you're watching back later you can just pause and then uh see if i went about it a different way or something whatever you like or you can just watch along if you like it's up to you really uh, so yes, this is a puzzle game where we are going to get given a certain configuration of verifiers that are going to verify numbers for us, like blue is equal to one or blue is greater than one. They get more complicated than that. They get a lot more complicated than that. Uh, and also these crazy grid cards with uh, ticks and crosses on them that are going to ultimately tell us whether our guess was right or not. Because what you will do is, based on the particular game you are playing, it will tell you, hey, this verifies in the game, and it goes with this card. So maybe my guess is, you, you pick a three-digit number, maybe my first guess is 111. You get your punch cards together like this, so you can see the shapes through the corners, and then you grab the card that you've been told goes with the verifier for this game, and it would tell me, in this random example, hey, this verifier is saying no. So it's telling me blue is one at the moment and it's telling me false. So that means blue is greater than one. And so on and so on. The game will have configured it so that through the verifiers and punch cards you have been given, only one number is right. And there is a competitive game where you've got to come up with the right answer as quickly as possible. Uh, and the fewest guesses, the fewest questions you have asked the machine is the winner. Or you can play it cooperatively or solo, in which case you need to beat the Turing machine. Uh, after you have found the correct answer, you tell it how long it took you and it will tell you whether or not you have beaten the Turing machine, which is what we're going to be doing. So we're, we're playing it cooperatively. Uh, I'm sure that I'm going to be needing your deductive abilities. I do love a good logic puzzle, but uh, I may well embarrass myself trying to do them live. So yes, oh, and as well, if you are kind of thinking, you know, you, you don't want devices at the table or, or whatever, and there's all these combinations, enterprising users of Board Game Geek, as always, have got you sorted in the files section of Board Game Geek for Turing Machine. People have already made PDFs with tons and tons of game combinations in. So if you were, say, going on holiday or whatever and just didn't want to have any devices, you could, in theory, just print out a few pages of these combinations and have a ton of uh, games in front of you. But yeah, you can go on the website that's right here. This is just a browser window that's open and it's going to tell us what to start with. Oh, before we get started, uh, you can support the channel, by the way, on uh, Patreon or Ko-fi. There are links in the description. It would be massively appreciated if you can do that. You can do, like, thanks and super chats and things, I think, on YouTube. I'm less uh, informed of how they happen. But, well, they do come up from time to time when the program wants to tell me that messages have happened. But, yeah, any support would be massively appreciated. It's how I can be here right now. So, on the website, maybe we'll try the daily challenge later on because the game doesn't take very long we're probably going to have a few stabs at it so just to show you the basic thing so you tell it you want a game generating wait a minute why can i see my hand through the browser has the browser got a green screen filter on it because it did for gal's ear there we go that's more like it i think once I can't remember what the reason was for it. So I'm going to go on solo co-op. There are modes. There is extreme mode, nightmare mode. I'm not entirely clear on the intricacies of the various modes. I have only tried it on classic mode in the different difficulties. I've um, you know, 
you, I've, I've, I've been on hard. I've succeeded on hard a few times. Uh, but just to show you in its simplest way, let's just turn everything down. So it's just you know, simple to start with. We'll just have four different verifiers. We'll go on easy mode and it'll generate a game for us. So setting this aside for now, I need to find these verifiers and put them around this board. I will say that the only thing uh, for kind of solo play, like the, the verifiers go around this board like this, which is great and more accessible when there are multiple people playing all around it. But for solo play, I wish there was just like a little strip where you could just put them all in a line. You'd need more space for them. This does space them out nicely. As you'll see, because I've I've zoomed in a bit here, because you don't really need to see the other cards. So for this less verifier game, we've got all of these cards here. They've got different coloured numbers on the corners. It's basically, I think I read in the forums, they've only got different numbers so that you can't kind of remember what the number means and remember what's right or wrong or something. I don't know how you would do that. Maybe if you've got a great memory. But yeah, it's telling me to look at the purple numbers and A's card is 585. This one's going to be, oh, I'm going the wrong way. 633, 404 and 372. There we go. So we are set up. And so you, the, the actual configuration of it is so you can have the main board, the verifier comes out here, and then that goes on the end of it. That's the kind of ends of the spokes. That's how the setup is. But I do like, when I have been playing it solo, I've kind of just had them on top of each other. I have to just remember which letter's which. Uh, and as long as you don't confuse, like there is a, a little dry white marker that comes with the game, especially for multiplayer, like to mark off which verifier this goes with, because, you know, if there's multiple players, they're all picking up cards and taking them up to themselves. You might forget where they came from. So you can do that. But solo, it's not come up yet. So I haven't been writing on there. Yeah, we've got it. We, well, we've got we've got our little analog uh, computer for Turing machine. Hey, everyone, by the way. Hey, Rogue Logic. Hey, Thomas. Hey, Clement. Hey, Panda. The challenge is the same depending on the verifiers. I couldn't really see an immediate answer last time I looked on what uh, Challenge and Nightmare do. I wonder if they just use harder verifiers, maybe. But yeah, when you're just playing solo, I don't need them all kind of arranged like this and some upside down and around. It's just easier to read when they're all uh, kind of flat. So between these verifiers, we're going to find a three-digit number. So the verifiers will verify in the code that we pick. This will compare the triangle number, the blue number, to three. It's going to tell us, you know, based on what we've picked, is it less than three, equal to three, or greater than three? This is going to tell us how many fours are in our code, zero, one, two, or three of them. This is going to tell us which color's number is larger than either of the others whether it's blue that's bigger than the other two, yellow, and so on. And this one is going to tell us if there are more even than odd or odd than even numbers. Between those four things, we are going to find a three-digit code. So I don't need the game thing up anymore until we are going to make a guess. The game comes with a lovely pad of sheets, but for purposes of you know not having my hand in the way and smearing my hand in ink all the time, uh, I have uh, just downloaded the thing onto a tablet. So... I'm just drawing it on there. It's the exact same as the actual pad that you get with the game. You get a fair few sheets. Don't worry about that. All double-sided. It doesn't give you hardly any and I've run out. I'm just doing this for convenience. Right. So, yes. Between these, we can guess a number. The verifiers themselves can give you some information. So, a verifier will never be there unless it gave you some kind of information. I can't remember an example of when that matters. But this can tell us, it's asking us which colour's number is bigger than either of the others. That tells us that it is not a, a number where it's all the same. So three fours isn't going to happen, is it? Because this would be irrelevant. Because it would always be false. The game won't do that to you. The game will never give you a verifier that gives you no information. So we know already, actually, there is no point putting 
the same digit in three times, which means that this verifier, we know already that it's not going to be three fours on there. For everything else, I think we're just going to have to take a stab at some guesses, at, at some numbers. So I think, what if we go for... Put in a four in. What if we make blue a four? Because we could ask. You can ask three questions with a number that you have um, selected each round. Let's let's go with blue as a four. So you grab the relevant punch card from the little organizer it gives you. So we'll see if one four is true, and let's make yellow and purple smaller, and make them both odd. We can see if there's more odd than even. So what if we went for... I've run out of... Um, I've run out of logic now. 431. Does that work? Just as a first guess? Because it's not those put together, it's just that it's larger than either of them, isn't it? Oh, true. And if the code was three fours, A would be irrelevant and D would be irrelevant. So, yeah. We, so we've discounted one thing. It's definitely not three fours. But let's get, let's get that um, guessed. So you pop your guess in this first grid here. And you can ask up to three questions. The fewer questions you ask, the better. And the fewer rounds you can guess the code in, the better as well. So let's have a look. Is blue larger than the others? And you guess it would mean that... Oh, I suppose, yeah, that maybe there can't be two fours, because then that would tell you D's answer. So is there a four at all even? So you put the punch cards in this configuration so you can see the shapes through all of them and then make sure this is arranged the right way around and it's gonna tell us right or wrong. So in this case, we have got blue bigger than either of the other two. That's wrong. Blue is not the biggest number. So we put a little cross through C and we can make notes at the bottom. So that was verifier C, wasn't it? We know that it's either square or circle is biggest. So we've discounted one bit of information right now. We can ask some more things. So that means one of the numbers is going to be bigger than the other two, doesn't it? So doesn't that say now that blue can't be five because it can't be the biggest number? Yellow or purple has got to be bigger than it. I think that sounds right that checks out doesn't it is there even a four in this code let's ask verifier b about the number that i've picked oh yes so according to the code that i've chosen b is saying it's happy with that so we can write in the green bit of b straight away there is one four And I suppose blue still could be four, because one of the other numbers could be five and the other one could be really small. Okay, we've got one more question with this code. Are we going to ask it, are there more odd than even or the other way around? I suppose that's a 50-50. Once you've asked it, you know the answer is the advantage of that. Or are we going to ask it if blue is bigger than three? I suppose since blue isn't the biggest number... I feel like if it tells us right, then we know that blue is four. But if it tells us wrong, we've only discounted the number four. I suppose we don't discount anything for asking this. And we could ask this in future, couldn't we? Yeah, I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask it, is blue right? I'm gonna ask yeah, I think you're right, Clements. So oh we're right. Blue is greater than three. So absolutely a good thing to ask, because that is a ton of information because we know that blue is is blue smaller than three is three or bigger than three we know it's bigger than three 
so that means we already know it can't be five. So there we go. Blue is four. There's no reason to choose another number now, really. Okay. And yes, we know there is a five because something's got to be bigger than either of the other two numbers. So yellow or purple is five. And we know there's only one four. So that means that the other two colours can't be fours either. Right, I'm going to keep this four out then. Pop the others back. What do we want our next guess to be then? So we want one of them to be a five. I think, you know, the code is either 452 or 425, isn't it? I don't, like, there's not concrete information on that, but I feel like for this to give me any information, if this told me that there were more odds than evens, the code could be, like, one's a, blue is four, one of them is a five, and the other could then be a three or a one, and we would have no, nothing else could give us more information. We've got the information from that, we've got the information from that, we're about to find out the information from that. Whereas if that told me there was more even than odd, we would know that one of the missing numbers is five, and so the other missing number would have to be a two, because it's the only other even number that's allowed. That's what I'm kind of thinking. I don't know if it's good to just jump in with that. I'm gonna have my next guest number be four, five, two. Four, five, two. Is yellow larger than the others? No. So that was, uh, that was C. So we know now that purple is the five then. Purple is the biggest. And yeah, I, I feel like it's gotta be the two, right? Because otherwise this isn't giving me any information. Or I suppose it, it is discounting the two, but then it would be up for guesswork what the number is, and I don't think... I'm not sure actually, do the verifiers always narrow it down to one number? Or is there sometimes some guesswork involved? I am going to... pop a... tester code. Let's go for it. So I can just say the round is over now, having only asked one question. But if I'm wrong about this, we've got to have another round. So I am saying four, two, five is the correct answer. Verify, that is the correct code. Did you beat the machine though? So now you tell it what you asked. So we got that right. I wonder if it's using this bit as well for um, kind of data purposes to see how quickly people are getting it and that? I wonder. Because you, Yeah, you put in how many rounds it took you and what your results were. We beat the machine. <gasps> we found the code in two rounds and four questions. The machine took one more question, which I was going to ask to make sure. But yeah, I think that last question maybe wasn't relevant. There is something, as the verifiers get more complicated, I should have a screen, actually, that will show you more of the browser. This is a great little document that's... I think it's on BoardGameGeek as well, or it's in the forums. It's definitely on the, the publisher's website. Uh, that's a kind of... It's a page that's like, do you think the machine is wrong? Click this if you think the machine is wrong. And it's basically saying the machine is never wrong. There is one solution to all of these things, and... You are wrong, basically. You have misinterpreted the machine if you think that it's come out wrong. Because sometimes, and these are more complicated verifiers that we might come across in a, in a harder game. So this card here on the left, it verifies that a colour is equal to one. The important thing is, it doesn't tell you which colour that verifier cares about. So if you were to guess, like with a code that's like blue one, 
and then something else, and then a purple one, and you get X. It doesn't necessarily mean that blue and purple aren't one. It means that that verifier didn't care about blue or purple. It was actually measuring yellow. So there's kind of an extra dimension in these more difficult verifiers. I don't know if I'm explaining this well. <laughs> that uh, you don't know which variable they're actually checking. Compare it to a really simple one where it is literally telling you this one tells you what blue is. Or there are even simpler ones that is, it is going to tell you is yellow odd or even. You know where you stand with a right or wrong from that. But these more complicated verifiers that come along, yeah, you've got to watch out what you're getting out of that information. So yeah, let's uh, let's flip back to the website then. So that was an easy one. We did, we got it right and deserve all the credit in the world, but that was an easy puzzle. So I would, I would hope that we, that we got that one okay. So I just need to reset me cards, don't I? Six, three, five. And we'll turn up the difficulty. Five, eight, seven. Four, oh, six, and three, seven, four. No problem. And put me verifiers back. I can't remember actually. I haven't done the daily challenge in a couple of weeks. Is do you pick a difficulty on the daily challenge, or is it always the same? I think let's let's go on a, another non-daily challenge for now. So keep it in this. This is how the configuration comes. So I assume this is the standard setup. I'm not sure how the verifiers affect it. Do they make it more difficult putting more verifiers in? Like, is it easier to work out if there's only four verifiers? I'm not really sure. Uh, but yeah, this is the standard setup. Classic mode, standard difficulty, five verifiers. So let's give it a go with what the default kind of setup is. So it's still giving us a random puzzle, and you can see in the top there, that's the code. If you wanted to give it a go yourself. But don't worry, there, there are millions of combinations. There's plenty of different uh, setups. 17, 19, and 22. So we've got an extra thing being asked of us now. And then yellow numbers, 219, 289, 395, 699, oh, nearly, and 536. There we go. So, what are we being asked to check? I'll just keep these vaguely near the letters that they're meant to be. It'll be okay, as long as I don't get confused which of these cards go where will be fine. Let's have a look at what it's asking us while I rub out what's on here actually as well. Oop, start again. I shouldn't have rubbed out my name, should I? I'm, that's still true. Marty unfortunately hasn't come and joined us on the, the blanket. So A is going to verify the number of threes in the code. Yeah, I've put, I just don't want it to get lost in, like, the video. I, I tend to just have them, like, in a line in... Um, I play. That's like, this is great for playing multiplayer, but I wish there was kind of a fold-out strip for having them as well, even if it was just, like, kind of vertical. Daily Challenge doesn't have different difficulties. Okay, well, we should, maybe we'll give that, that a go next. So the number of threes in the code, the blue number compared to the yellow number, how many even numbers are in the code? The sum of blue and yellow compared to six. And if the three numbers in the code are in ascending order, descending order, or in no order at all. Okay. So. I assume then that like it can't be It can't be 333, three, three, because then 
Would 333 be no order? Like, what initial... Nothing jumps out at me, really, from an initial thing of what this tells us. It's going to give us a lot of information about... Blue and yellow, potentially. And it's tempting me to do some guesses involving, like, threes. I think I want the sum of them to be more than six and one to be bigger than the other and see where that starts with us. There can't be two threes either. Why can't there be two threes? So I can see, like, if you had, like, three, one, three, that would be no order, right? Yeah, sometimes, like, I'm sure there is, but no initial deduction beyond that jumps out at me with these bits. So I want the totals to be more than six. So what if we went for 4, 5, and we could check for no order, couldn't we? Or we could check for even numbers and stuff. Or we could just check for threes. The threes one, though, I'm not going to tell you that much, is it? Ah, if there were two threes, it would still tell you what that was. Ah, okay. And I suppose, yeah, triangle can't equal square because that would tell you there's no order. I see. I just remember this stuff. What if we made it ascending and then just asked that? What if we guessed three, four, five? That would still be bigger, wouldn't it? That would that would still be bigger than six, which was my initial thing. I'm gonna guess three, four, five. Well not guess, but that's my first test. So let's compare the sum of blue and yellow to six. Ooh. It is bigger than six. So D is true. And I can write in that triangle plus square is bigger than six. That doesn't tell us anything, I suppose, that neither of them could be one. Because... Even if the other one was 5, that would be 6, and it's got to be bigger than 6. So neither of them can be 1. So it's told us a little bit, and hopefully that will expand into more later. I do want to ask these things. You can only ask 3 bits. I would like to know... Is blue less than yellow? It's not. So does that tell us then that blue is bigger than yellow? Because we already said, haven't we? That they can't be equal because then that would tell you that there's no order and you'd never need to ask that. So what, what was it? It was false, wasn't it? Yeah, so B is false. So we know now then that blue is greater than yellow, which means that yellow can't be five. And blue can't be two. So 
So we don't need to ask this ever again. We don't need to ask this ever again. I think that's pretty good. So the last thing, E, it has to be no order because if it was ascending or descending, it would tell you true they're next to each other, aren't they? So you never need to ask that anyway. So you know there's either one or zero threes because it can't be these ones because they would discount that. And that has to be no order. So we would just need to know the even numbers next time. Is one three correct? One three is correct. Okay. So one of these numbers is a three. We don't need to ever ask that again. So we need a new guess. Maybe I should have asked the even number one. So we're saying there's no order to them. But blue is bigger than yellow, which means that purple's got to be bigger than yellow as well. Because there's got to be no order to them. They can't be ascending or descending. So if purple's got to be bigger, it can only be four or five. So the number of even numbers is going to tell us what purple is. So what if the guess was 545? Five. Oh, wait a minute. Is that a good guess? Because we, we still don't know what yellow is. We know that there's no order. I suppose if there were three even numbers... Ooh. I think I should have asked about the odd or even numbers. Because if it tells us there's three even numbers... The answer is 424. Four. In fact, isn't that the only thing that this can tell us that will narrow down a code? Oh no, because one of them's got to be a three. So it can't be three even numbers. We already knew that. We know there can only be one three. So no, because it could be three two five. It could be five three five. Like blue could still be three. Could circle still be three? Oh, no, it can't, can it? Wait a minute. So the sum's got to be... Remember, the sum of blue and yellow has got to be more than six as well. So I don't think blue can be three. Because if blue was three, yellow would have to be two. That's not more than six. So they can't be true. Or at least blue can't be three. Can blue be four? Oh. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yellow could be seven. Okay. I thought I'd figured out something amazing then. I've, I've, I've discounted another number. Is there anything else we can get out of that? I think we need to know, don't we, how many even numbers are in this.
Have you found it, Panda? Are you using the code and playing and seeing how fast you can do it? How many guesses did you do? Or have you worked it out based on this and I should know it? What question can I ask this that's going to give me an answer? We know it can't be three even numbers anyway. If it was two even numbers, we'd know it was four, three, four. It's not going to tell me it's one even number. We know yellow's got to be three, right? Yellow's got to be three. Why is that again? Oh, I've got the answer. Yellow's got to be three. And there is only one, yeah, there was only one three and only yellow can be it. So if this told me no even numbers, we would know it's 535. Five. I found the, verifi the answer because verifier D says that A and B is larger than 6. So we know it can't be 4 and 2. But it could have been 5 and it could be 5 and 2. Isn't it depending on what like what this tells me? Because the two still could be yellow, couldn't it? Like if, oh no, because it's the only three. Like yellow can't be anything else. We already know that it's three, because something has to be three, and I've crossed everything else off. If that's if it's right, well, I can't remember why I crossed them off now. It's just that this verifier isn't going to give me an answer, is it? I think it's got to tell me that there's no even numbers. And then the answer's 535. Five. Because if there's... It's either got to tell me there's none or two. If it tells me there's two even numbers, we know the answer's 434. Four. It can't tell us that there's one even number. So that's going to tell us the answer, isn't it? It's either going to say 0, and it's 535, five, or it's going to say 2, and it's 434. Four. It can't be 535, five, though. That would be okay, wouldn't it? We know they've got to be higher than 6. There's one 3. The sum's got to be higher than 6. I think we've still got to ask a question, haven't we? Yeah, but we haven't asked it yet. How many even numbers are in it? Yeah, I think we've like I think we're there. I think everything that we're saying is right, but I think we've we've got to ask it, and that's going to tell us what the answer is. So if this verifier, I know that four's wrong anyway. Oh, uh, the eraser's too big. Five three five. So is there no? The card says that there's two even numbers. Where though? Yeah, but we haven't asked it yet. Yeah. It's going to ask us ask us how many even numbers are in it.
It's, it's not saying the same even numbers. They could be different even numbers. It's just asking even whether they're even numbers or not. I think we're on the same page. There's a delay in there. It's hard. It's hard to know. This this verifier here. Yeah, it's just asking how many even numbers are in it, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not saying that the verifier is telling me these particular numbers, but. It's just verifying how many even numbers are in it, and we don't know that yet. We haven't asked it. Yeah, I know that those particular numbers are just examples. But, yeah, we don't know what the numbers are yet. Right, I think that it, I think we've got it down to these two things. I thought we'd already discounted two, though. I think we could have had it by now. Yeah, I know that 535, five, like, it could be the answer, couldn't it? There isn't only, there isn't no even numbers in it. So, it can't be that. I don't, I don't know what you're saying though, but, but how, how do you know that there are two even numbers in it? Why is the chat not coming up on the screen? It's meant to be. Sorry on YouTube if you're wondering what I'm rambling on about. Oh, there it is. There it is. That was supposed to be on all the time. Yeah, but how how do you know that there are two even numbers in it? We haven't we haven't been told that yet. Have we been told a bit that I haven't seen? I don't know what's happened in this one. I thought we'd worked it out well. Right, what do we know? There's one three. Blue's bigger than yellow. You are right about what odd and even numbers are, yes. No, we, we never asked it about the evens, did we? The verifier is verifying how many even numbers are in the code. And we haven't asked it yet. Well, we have now. We know that it's not zero. But how... Unless you have looked up or played and seen that there are two even numbers, how would you know that there are two even numbers? Is the, the point of that. It's like, yeah, if you know that there are two even numbers, then... I don't know. We just keep going around on this. But why do you think why do you think that there are two even numbers in the in the answer though? Yeah, but the verifier can give you the answer that there are zero even numbers. Like, the verifier could have come up with true on that, and there would have been no even numbers in the answer. It was possible. <laughs> I don't think... I know the machine's never wrong. I think that we're at uh, cross-purposes here.
Right. Let's let's make sure I haven't crossed out a number that I shouldn't be crossing out. So we know something's got to be a three. Triangle's got to be bigger than square. So that's true. We know that the sum has got to be bigger than six. So yellow can't be one because even if blue's five, that's not big enough. And we know that there's got to be no order to the numbers. So purple's got to be bigger than yellow. And so if they've both got to be bigger, they can't be twos. Something's got to be a three, but then something else has got to be bigger. You miss it. You were confusing odd and even. I don't think you were. You were right about which numbers were odd. So, we asked it. At some point in the past, we asked it. Which, uh, are there no even numbers? No, there is an even number involved. So there's a three somewhere. The three can't be blue. Because then it would be bigger than... It would have to be bigger than yellow. Yellow would have to be two, and that's not bigger than six. So it could still be 5, 2, 3. It could still be 5, 3, 4. Have I got to guess another number now? I think first time round, first code, I should have asked it about even numbers. We could have asked it about the three any time. Although it did give us information. I think I've got to... All we know that it's, it isn't no evens. There is at least zero... No, there is at least one, two or three evens. We know it's not three evens because there's got to be a three in there. It could still be one or two evens without us guessing anything. Check the ordering. We never asked question E. We, I think we had, work, we had worked question E out that it's no order because if it had been ascending or descending, it would have told you the answer to an old one. But it's the only thing we can ask, so we might as well ask it. Yes, there is no order. But I don't think we know still. What, um, what was that one? E. No order. Can almost spell. So we're right in there being no order. So yeah, it's not going to be four and it's not going to be four and two. Yeah, if I've said that, it's wrong. But it could be five, two, three, couldn't it? Five, two, three fits in with everything that we've found so far. I think it's not going to be four, two, three, but it could be four, three, four, four, three, four, four, three, five. I think we've got to ask. I think we've got to have it another round. Yeah, it was it was a check. Square's still possible as two though, isn't it? Because triangle could be five. It could be five, two, three. We asked B in oh we assumed B. I think that we assumed it, though, based on... I think we were right in assuming that. 
I think we've already lost this game, but I will, like, check it. Was this going to tell us that blue is greater than yellow? Yeah, blue is greater than yellow. I think, yeah, you are right to, like, those assumptions that, I think I made one little assumption, but Board Games with Thomas was making the good assumptions. Yeah, it's it's not going to... There's never going to be a useless verifier in here that's not going to tell you something. So if you know... Yeah, if, if we'd known blue was equal to yellow, there would have been no order, so it can't be that. And like, if they'd all been threes, you'd know there was no order, so that's not going to be true. Oh, I've crossed it out. I see what you mean. I've written it wrong. All we know, Panda... All we know, Panda, is that it isn't no evens. We don't know that it's one even number. We don't know that it's two even numbers yet. That would tell us, but we've got to ask it another number first. Yeah, triangle square's got to be bigger than six. So it could be five, two, three. It could be four, three, four or five. I don't think that the useless, the useless verifier bit is in the actual rules. It's definitely been written in the forums as a way. There's, there's some nice threads in the forums that help like, obviously, I haven't got it all down, but that help you try and get, especially with the harder ones. These aren't even the hard verifiers. Uh, especially with the harder verifiers, those deductions that you can make, the deductions that you can make before you even start are based on the... Yeah, the, the verify is not being useless. They will give. They will always be there to give you some information. I should have got a thread of those up as well as that X paradox. Yeah, we know it can't be four and two. Yeah, but why can't it be five, two, three? You can't discount the two yet. It might not be the two, but you can't. I don't think we can discount it with the information we've got. We need to know how many evens, and I think I should have asked how many evens in the first one as well. There is only one, like, there's there's only one number that's going to be true. I don't know why that's not coming up on my chat screen now. I've got to look at on the... Yeah, I'm saying that the, there are no useful, there are no useless verifiers that they will always give you something. Yeah, you're never going to be able to, like, work out the answer just from looking at these things. But, yeah, they can cross out a load of assumptions. They can cross out some combinations. So you can, like, we couldn't cross out the threes, but you would know that there is, like, a worksheet that somebody's made that's got every single possible combination on it which is probably more useful for the really difficult ones. So we could have right at the start of this gone, it's not three threes, because that would nullify the even verifier and this verifier. And so we know that's not even going to be it, because it would cancel out all those verifiers. YouTube chat's not even coming up on my screen anymore. It's coming up in a tiny little preview window that I can see now. But I think we gotta we gotta do a guess, haven't we? Four, three, four, and yeah, we've we've got to do another number. Ugh. Worst thing, I suppose it is useful useful if you use an Apple pencil all the time, but I don't. If you tap it, it turns to erase. And I don't use it as often as I'm not gonna say it's a useless purchase. It's been good for some things. Yeah, the verifiers will lead to other things as well. 
Because that, that's how we worked out that, like, we knew that blue wasn't smaller than yellow. But we also know that blue isn't equal to yellow, because that would tell us the answer to this one. So we know that blue is actually greater than yellow. And that there was no order from the start, because either of these answers would tell you the answer to this one and make the verify useless, right? All right, let me grab this and put this poor puzzle out of its misery. It wasn't expecting. So the answer is going to depend on how many evens, isn't it? Yeah, we can't have two fives, but either of them could be a five still. There are two evens, <laughs> thankfully, which actually... So yeah, that tells us the answer is four, two, three. No, it doesn't. Does that not tell us the answer to this? Oh no, it can't be 4, 2, 3, because the answer's got to go above 6, hasn't it? So one of them's got to be 3. So is the answer 5... The answer's got to be 4, 3, 4, hasn't it? The answer is 4, 3, 4. It can't be 4, 2, 3, because blue and yellow wouldn't add up to more than 6. There's got to be two evens. The only even that's possible... It can't be four four three because blue's got to be bigger. So four three four is the answer, isn't it? But I don't think we could have worked it out, Panda, without asking that question again. I don't think there is the slimmest chance that they've beaten the machine in this. Uh, let's test a code. <laughs> don't say I'm wrong now. There we go. We got it. Hey, Gameritis, how's it going? Dare we go into the <laughs> into the higher difficulties? You contributed, Panda. I don't know if it was thanks to you. I say that you were saying the right answer, but at a time when we couldn't have confirmed that was the right answer without asking another question. No, we did not beat the machine. The machine did it in the same number of questions, but with only only needing two combinations of things. Dare I turn the difficulty up? <laughs> shall we shall we have a go at just the daily puzzle? Oh I haven't clicked that ever. So I need to put these away. I'm glad I went on easy for the first one. I think that served as like a not for not for getting it right in particular, but for if you hadn't seen anything about Turing Machine before. I think that would explain the basic concept pretty well. But I think some wires got a bit crossed in game two. All right, get this all put away. Five, two, eight, nine. Three nine five. Yeah, there's a load of possibilities still that you can't just cross out. We needed to ask it about the even numbers. Now you were just assuming that there was two even numbers. It turns out that's true, but we didn't know that because we hadn't asked it. Unless you're playing yourself and you knew. Yourself and you knew. I hope not, though. So, yeah, the daily challenge, you don't put any options into this. You just Did I just tell it if we were co-op or... Yeah, you just tell it whether you're playing competitive or solo or co-op. Are you playing it, Panda, and you know? 
because that would kind of explain some of the crossed wires. Because we don't know. We're sitting back here still not knowing. Right, I need them and I need three, five, five. It's the same daily challenge for everybody though, I, th I think. If, if you click on the daily challenge of the page, this one would just come up. Seven, nine, three, three, eight, six, seven, eight, one, and two, seven, three. Yeah, I was kind of, th like, I, I do love logic puzzles. I was kind of thinking when I first heard about it, that, like, oh, that sounds nice, but it's a bit expensive then for just a, a few cards. I don't know if, I've got a lot of games I need to get. I don't know if I want to prioritise this one. And then when I actually saw something about it and saw that it was just um, a lovely logic puzzle. Love some deduction. <laughs> I mean, I, I said that at this point, that during the live stream, the deduction might fall apart. I suppose you've already done it. Okay. Well, I will. I think I'll do another one. I assume that this one won't take as long. I'm, I'll speed this one up. Let's get it. I'm going to be doing a most anticipated game stream either this Tuesday or next Tuesday. I'm not fully sure which one yet. I've got to check my schedule. But we'll be doing a, a proper top, top 10. I think it's going to be a live stream. Right. I've got my stuff out. What is this asking me? So this verifier is telling us whether purple is even or odd. This is telling us how many ones are in the code. This is telling us it's comparing yellow to purple. This is telling us whether the sum of all the numbers is even or odd. And this is telling us if a number repeats itself at all. So I think we know that it can't be three ones because that would tell us whether purple is odd or even or not. So there's no point guessing that. Or asking it if there's three ones in it. Because there can't be. And it would also tell us that there's a triple number. Right? Is that deduction sound? I have to admit, I do tend to jump in with a guess when I probably shouldn't. I should probably, like, sit and think about it a bit more. But if we did guess with two ones, we'd be able to guess this, we'd be able to guess this. And maybe just whether purple's odd or even. It's going to get us the most information. I think I think that might be okay. But we can only see if they're even. If they're equal to each other. I'm going for it. There's probably something I should have seen already that would discount this. Although, worst bit for me is the... My streaming software has frozen the YouTube chat. Twitch is still coming through all lovely. But the... The YouTube chat isn't coming through. There are, ah, thanks, Martin. The rule is on page seven of strategy. You will need the criteria of all of the verifiers. No criterion is superfluous. So, yeah, this would still tell us something, wouldn't it? Let's see, is there a double number in the solution? There is. So for 113, there is a double number. There's a double. Somehow, writing digitally makes me handwriting even worse. So we don't need that anymore. We've got the information from that. Yeah. 
is that double number ones? It is not ones. So I think that tells us there's either one or zero ones. I think we've already established there can't be three. So number of ones, zero or one. Because B was false. And then the third one, what should I ask it? I could just ask it if purple's odd or even. Whether they're greater, whether the sum's even or odd is something. But we could ask it that with any anything, can't we? I think ask it this. We could ask it those at any point. Is purple greater than yellow? No. So either... they're equal or yellow is bigger than purple. All right, Panda, don't let us know. So you're playing it as well. I think that makes sense. So we just, just compare with how quickly you found it against us afterwards. Right. So that's my three questions, isn't it? I've got to change my guess. So we there's a double, but it's not ones. The double could be those being equal, couldn't it? So what if I guessed one, two, two? One, two, two. Are yellow and purple equal? They're not. Okay. So yellow and purple are not equal. Yellow is bigger than purple. So that just tells us a little bit. And there is a double in there. So the double has got to be blue and that well, could be blue and yellow couldn't it could be blue and yellow could be blue and purple is purple even no purple is odd so we don't need to ask that again what did i ask it to begin with c was wrong wasn't it so purple is odd so it's not four it's not two Okay, the double number's not a one, we know that. I think we've got to know the sum, haven't we? Rather than ask it how many ones are in it. Telling us there were no ones would be helpful. I think telling us the I think finding out the sum is gonna be good for this. So the sum for this would be odd. It's wrong, so the sum is even. Sum even. Okay. Can we work that out with the information that we've got? So there is a repeating number. It's not a one. And the total is even. There's not a triple. And there's, yeah, there's not a triple because that was, it would have said no if it was a triple rather than a double. So they're not all going to be threes. I think there's still a lot of options, isn't there? Oh, no. So. Have I got to ask it one more question? Have I got to do another round of this? I don't think there's enough information, is there? We know that purple's odd.
and that yellow's got to be bigger. I think I've got to ask it another number. Unless you start assuming that, well, purple's not going to be... If purple was three, that discounts more yellows. I don't know if you can think like that, really. Yeah, Black Sonata and Search for Planet X are so good. Search for Planet X especially. I'd like to do that. But the, the downside of the deduction streams is that, like, I like that we can work them out together, but also... With it, like sometimes I've just got my head down just thinking about stuff. I think I've got to ask it another question, haven't I? But all that I can find out is how many ones are in it. There's not a pair of ones, but there could still be one, or there could be none. What if I assumed purple was three? Because that's the only way it discounts enough numbers. Yellow's got to be bigger, so it would have to be four or five. So the answer couldn't be 553, five, because that's not even. It couldn't be 353, three, to make the pair that way, because that's not even. It's got to be a pair of... I oh, know it is. Yeah. It's got to be... It's got to be an odd and an even, then. So 343? Three, have I kind of skipped some logic there? Purple can't be one, because if there's one one, another number would have to be odd to make them to make the total. Ah. But then you won't have a double because there can't be two ones. Yes, I think I have just done an assumption rather than the step of logic there, Rohit. Thanks. But I think we've got it then. I don't think we need to ask it another question. Come on, browser window. Three, four, three. Verify. We are correct. Did we beat the machine? I feel like two round six questions is decent. It's probably possible in less. Did I beat the machine? We beat the machine who did it in the same amount of time. So there we go. So I think... Let's do one more then. Let's have a look at what hard is. Like, should we go on hard difficulty or do you think just choose one of these like extreme modes on standard difficulty? What do you reckon? Pump up the mode or pump up the difficulty? I'll sort these away. So we've got number... Seven, eight, thirteen, eighteen, twenty. You're there. And I have to, unfortunately, put the browser down so I can see the chat. Seven, nine, seven, eight. Two one two six three four six five seven two two three and seven four three. Yeah, the only thing is, like, I, I do like the hard verifiers. I just don't know how the variables... Ch like, is mode affecting the difficulty? Like, Basically, I'm not really sure what mode does. I know that difficulty brings out the harder verifiers, which are fun, but... I should say, Clement, hard. 
Hi, Sam. Uh, there, we've just done the... Hopefully you haven't uh, seen. We've, we've just done the daily challenge puzzle. The solution is not there. Up on the screen. Is there, like, an answer in the forums? Of what, like... Can I get on... I tried to have a look a couple of weeks ago, I think. When I first got the game out. Just to see, like, is, is there, like, a rundown of... The difficulty of this stuff? Standardizing the process of elimination. There's, much, there's people with much better deduction skills than me commenting on stuff. Yeah, I don't think anything else has been added in terms of like what are the what are the variables determining the difficulty. Well, we can we can say how many uh, verifiers are on it. So that's what I thought as well. Does 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 having fewer verifiers make it easier? Right. We'll work together. No spoilers. I haven't tried extreme. Let's stick with five verifiers. Extreme hard. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on here? So Extreme has two verifiers with the same answer card. And Nightmare has got f five verifiers, five answers, but you don't know which applies to which? Wow. Oh. Just increases the range of possible criteria and makes the game even harder. They may be for the future then. I think we'll definitely go on hard, but maybe we'll keep it classic for now and not introduce multiple variables of things just yet. Let's keep it at five, keep it classic, but let's see these hard verifiers in action. So you see the, the numbers have shot up, it's because there's, there's not going to be any more, is this odd or is this even? 33, 42, 43. I think we could, if I like shift to my screen here, A, B, C, D, E. I could have done this earlier, couldn't I really? As long as I can count letters in order. The other thing is not quite having enough space to put all the verifiers where they're meant to go. That's the advantage of having them fanned out across the hex. 278. 390. Oh, we could do it like this then. Then there's space. 580. Two nine six two five six Right. So I don't need the browser up so I can look at the chat. There's an advantage. Hey Stephen, we are just about to start a game. Happy New Year. But I don't blame you if you want to go back, especially if you haven't seen Turing Machine before. We started on this is this is hard difficulty, which is nowhere near the hardest difficulty. But yeah, we started with the the earliest ones. We started on easy, right? Let's have a look then. 
So this verifies if there is a sequence of ascending numbers, whether there is three numbers in ascending order, two numbers in ascending order, or none. This is going to verify whether a specific color is less than three. So if you remember earlier, when I had a quick look at that, um, the page for click this if you think the machine is wrong, the verifier is only looking at one color. You just don't know which color it is. So if you've got blue as one and it tells you false, that doesn't mean blue isn't one. It might mean it wasn't even looking at what blue is. It might not care at all. So we've got to keep that in mind. That's not the button I wanted to press. This verifies that a specific color is even or odd. Again, we don't know which one it is verifying. This verifier ver verifies which color is the smallest or the largest. We're not sure which. And this verifier verifies the blue number compared to one of the other numbers. So like what we've had before, but we don't know which it's comparing it against. Already, the difficulty shoots up to be frightening, right? So... Starting with deduction on this, when you don't know, yeah, four of these five, we don't know which colour it's looking at. Can you do any initial deduction? So if there were three numbers in a row, it would answer a few things for you, which kind of leaves me thinking that it wouldn't be there. But that's not something you can really deduce, is it? It's not something that you can say. It's something that you could hope. What if we guessed, to begin with, all the same number? Because if this bottom verifier came out false, we'd know that blue isn't the same as either of the other two. If this came out false, depending on whether the number we picked was even or odd, we would know that none of the numbers could be odd or even, so that's probably not going to happen. And if this was true, we'd know there's no numbers in ascending order. I'm kind of thinking, just ask all the same number. You with me? I don't think it particularly matters which number. Oh, actually, we can't discount both, can we? Because we don't know which one it's looking at. Like, if this is only comparing blue to yellow and it says false, blue and purple might be the same, but the verifier just wasn't looking at that. So is this a great guess to begin with? I'm, I'm second guessing my first guess now. I don't think that's going to give us a ton of information thinking about it now. What if we do two numbers ascending? Because you've got to ask a couple of questions, haven't you, to get any information out of some of this stuff. Let's go for... 2, 3, 4... When in doubt, one, two, three is always a banger. Well, two, two, three, four, pretty close. Let's see if there's a sequence. There is not a sequence. Oh, wait a minute. 
take it back to say, I already said that wasn't it. I don't want three numbers in sequence, do I? Two, three, five then. Where are the other fives? I haven't put them away properly. Okay, that first guess never happened. Two, three, five. I already said it can't be three. Did I... S could it not be three numbers ascending? I think I was, like, leading to believe... Let's, let's not do take backs. Stick with your initial thing. You've been told some information now. Maybe it was a waste of time, but stick with it. So, there is not a sequence of three numbers in ascending order. So it can be either two ascending or none. Let's ask it this bottom one. There's so many things that you need to ask on hard. So E is telling us no. So basically, this is a situation where I end up like having to write out all of the things. You could actually do something where you just took a picture of them all, couldn't you? And then scribble them out from there. I've got the technology to quickly do that. So if this is false, we don't know what it's particularly, look at, particularly looking at. But we know that the verifier is not... If it's comparing blue and yellow, that's false. If it's comparing blue and purple, that's false. We can't discount one or the other, if you know what I mean. Like one of those still might be true, but this verifier is saying that they're false. Should I ask it another, the other mad one? What do you say? You say false as well. So we've just got no's from this. So we know that it's, as far as it's concerned, it's either looking at the biggest or the smallest. So as far as this is concerned, either blue isn't the smallest or purple isn't the biggest. Not necessarily both. That's my three questions. <laughs> Some information's been gotten. <laughs> Somewhere, I think. I think it's okay to feel a bit more lost in the hard ones. Right. We should probably do another sequence. What if we did things the other way around a bit? What if we put nothing in ascending order? They're not all the same. They can't all be the same because then this would be irrelevant. Yeah, the very first time when I was going to guess 111, we know they can't all be the same. And these would never help you if they were all the same number. I think let's try something in an ascending sequence of two. But we know blue isn't... No, blue might still be the smallest and it's not looking...
Let's do four, five, one. And ask it this. Let me write me guessing. I have... Oh, I have not... That's not right. Oh, I've, I've taken two blues. Four, five, one. That's why I couldn't see an answer through that. Four, five, one. And we're asking it this verifier, which is also false. So this verifier is not... So it's not true when yellow's the biggest or when purple's the smallest. So it's either looking at blue and blue is the biggest or it's looking at yellow and yellow is the smallest. It's not... That isn't what I've asked it. That isn't what I've asked it. I've asked it this bottom one. Right. So this is still false. We know that as far as the verify is concerned, it's not asking us. We already knew that it wasn't asking us if blue is smaller. I meant to ask it this one. Okay, then. We got a cross on that. This is what I wanted to ask it. Okay, still false. But now I can cross those things off. So purple's not the smallest. 111 doesn't interact with C that way. With D, though, do you think? Because then, if they were all the same, nothing could ever be the biggest or the smallest, so this one would be irrelevant. Oh, no. Blue is not the largest right now. Yellow is the largest. So, yeah. Either blue is the biggest or yellow is the smallest. Still don't know what this is particularly saying in this. Oh, is the lag really bad? Is the lag really bad? It should be set to not to like fairly low lag, I think. Stream settings. I can't change it. But yeah, it's supposed to be on low lag. Right, so we've asked it two things about that. We've still got 451 and we can ask something else. I think we should ask this, right? Is there any ascending going on at all? Yes. There are two numbers ascending. So, scribble out that. There are two ascending. We don't need to ask that question ever again. I should probably keep it there because that's A. And I've gotten rid of the board telling me which letter's which. Okay, that's all we can ask with that. New guess. So there's definitely two ascending. And either blue isn't the smallest. So blue can't be the biggest, can it? Maybe it can. I'm just trying to think now about D. Because there's two ascending numbers, not three and not none. The ascending numbers, it could be like 5, 1, 2. Blue still could be the smallest, and it's just that this verifier was never looking at blue. Blue could still be the biggest, yellow could still be the smallest, but...
Let's make blue bigger than yellow. But let's not make yellow the smallest. But you know it's too ascending, so that wouldn't help. Yeah, what we know for D is, it's either looking at blue and it's the biggest, or it's looking at yellow and it's the smallest. But it's not, look, it's not telling us both of those things. I've asked it nothing about what's bigger or smaller than three. I feel like this verifier is going to tell me that blue's bigger than yellow. Which kind of leads me to think that blue is the biggest. Because if blue's bigger than yellow, and there's still two ascending numbers, blue would have to be the biggest, and then we go down for yellow, and up again for purple. So I don't think D is going to help us anymore. I think whichever one of those is true... Oh, actually, I suppose yellow could still be the smallest and purple could be, end up be the, being the biggest. Let's do a guess. Ugh. Hey, jackpot man. It's going well. And my expressions might not lend itself to that, but it's going well. This is what deduction looks like. Let's ask it something where blue is the biggest and yellow is smaller but not the smallest. I know that goes against our two ascending thing that we know, but just to get some more information, not actually guess a code. Sometimes you've got to guess things that you know are wrong, right? To get some more information. So is this... 532, I think, exactly right, Leah. And we're asking this, aren't we? Is blue the biggest? It's still saying false. That still could be true. And yellow isn't the smallest in this, so it would say false. I think it's telling me that yellow is the smallest number. I think if we, if we were to put... Make yellow small, this would have been a tick. Because we've discounted everything else that it can tell us. So, like, just as a reminder, these verifiers all here are looking at one number or comparing two numbers. We don't know which, and it doesn't discount everything else. So it's not like everything else is false and yellow is the smallest, and we know that, like, all that stuff that it said was wrong was fine. Blue could still be equal. Blue could still be the biggest. It's just that this verifier here does not care about blue. The only thing we haven't tested so far, and it hasn't... Everything... Every other option has been false. So I think... Like, yellow is the smallest is something that we know now. Oh, I should write my number in. 5, 3, 2, and D is false. So I think think if my logic's right in that that d can't tell us anymore i think we've still got 532 i'm hoping that e can tell me that it's actually measuring blue against yellow and that blue's bigger than yellow no it's not measuring that something's equal It's either comparing blue to yellow or blue to purple, and two of them are the same. I think that gives us some information. Yeah, we don't quite know which it's comparing yet, but we know there's got to be something ascending in there as well. There's got to be two numbers e exactly ascending. You could have deduced yellow as smallest because two ascending is either the first two or the second two. And if it's the first two, it would have gone against the D criteria. True, true, true. Probably didn't need to ask that question. So yellow's the smallest anyway. There is ascending, and two numbers are equal. So 
So if yellow is the smallest, two and three have to be ascending, right? So what, so I'm saying two and three, <laughs> yellow and purple have to be ascending because yellow is the smallest. And we know that not three things are not ascending. So it's got to be, we also know that two things are equal. So we know that it's got to be blue and purple are equal and yellow's the smallest, right? I think we can deduce that, I think. If those are the two options for what E would tell us, if yellow is the smallest, as we think D is telling us, yeah, two things have got to be ascending. Exactly two numbers have got to be ascending. We don't know where in the number those two ascending things are, but yeah, two consecutive numbers are ascending. So I think it's got to be blue and purple are equal but yellow and purple are the ascending pair so that means purple can't be one and blue can't be one as well purple's got to be the yellow's got to be the sole smallest thing i've asked it two things here i've not have i only asked it about d Oh yeah, we've just uh, we've just worked out here, haven't we? I think, unless I'm just wrong. <laughs> I should ask it now. I think we've still got so much to find out about these numbers here. Yeah, every verifier is going to give you some information. So it's probably not a good point to have gotten this far and not asked B or C anything. So we don't know which colour B is looking at. It's going to tell us that one of the colours is less than three. Probably orange, right? So it's saying false. I don't think we even need to look at that, do we? Yellow's going to be less than three, I think. So it's not purple. It's either going to tell us that blue or yellow is less than three. That kind of says that. Hey, Monica, how's it going? My brain's getting melted. So that was B. And then we might as well ask C. Oh, C is true. I've written it in the wrong question, haven't I? It's going to confuse things right up. No, don't do that arrow. Rub it out. It's not to say that only one of them can be less than three, but it's only looking at one of them. So this is correct. This is saying true. So it could be that squares odd, that triangles odd, or that purple is even. One of those is true. <laughs> Brain's looking a bit as well. I have done a couple of hard ones as well and got them right eventually I've got four more wrong though or like taken too long I feel like I'm going to take too long here right we should guess something else but where are we so it's going to go yellow is smaller than the other two numbers which are a pair If I 
Hey Rach. Yeah. We're logic in. Still just going to say hi. I'm broke a bit. Yeah, it's it's logic. It's a logic puzzle like Black Sonata, but this is kind of like earlier in the stream we did easier difficulties. This is hard difficulty. Yeah, it's pretty difficult, Rach. Yes, please. Well, what do you think the answer is, Rach? Let's we know see. we know that there's a there's a three digit number here. Each digit can be one to five. We know that blue and purple are the same number. Yellow is the smallest number. And either blue or yellow are odd, or purple is even. One of those things is true. But the other two aren't necessarily not true. It all goes a bit mad when it's hard. I don't know. Okay. I think... If we guess, even, even, odd, and C now comes back for, oh no. If we guess odd, 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 and C now comes back false, we know it was telling us that purple was even. But if it still says right, we've found no more information. Because if purple was even, that would tell us that it's... that blue and purple would either be four or two. I think we need a guess where blue is less than three. To see if that is telling us that... If it's telling us blue is less than three, that means the answer would be 2-1-2. Two, two. What about 232? Two, two? I know that's not the answer, but if I guess 232, two, and this tells me true, then this was measuring blue. But then you never used this. Okay, it might end up taking me far too many guesses. Are you telling me that blue is less than two? No, it's not. It's telling me that yellow. No, we're gonna work, we're gonna work out the answer, Panda. You can like you can compare like speeds with us, but there's no point if you just tell me the answer. So it was not telling me that blue is less than three. It's measuring if yellow's less than three, which is likely, isn't it? Because yellow's the smallest number. I don't think we need a check mark from it to find that out. How I... Did I pick the right thing up? I don't think I picked the right thing up. It's still, it's still bad. And the only thing that I've changed is blue being even. That makes it false. So blue was odd. It was even last time. The only thing I've changed is blue and now it's false. So it's looking at blue. Blue is odd. Can I work it out now? So I asked it B and C. B was still wrong. C is now wrong. But that's good. That's given me information. C is odd. 
we know that purple is the same. Purple's the same as blue. Yellow's less than three. There is an ascending sequence, so the sequence has to be three, two, three, right? That's the only option, I think. Oh, you're going for like speed of time. You'd always win that. Look how fast I think. You're always going to beat me in a timed race. Come on. Yay! <laughs> Got it. It's not asking me if we beat the machine. Oh. Shouldn't it be asking me that? Oh, I'm not, I'm not sure where the button is of see if you beat the machine. Let's assume we did. I, I feel, my gut feeling is, no, you didn't. That's tons of questions. I feel like the machine probably solved it in a lot less time than that but hey we got there in the end hopefully you can tell me in the comments later if i'm uh, getting something wrong about the logic that i'm using because hey it'll it'll help propel me to further heights and maybe we'll uh, go up to did i do it in competitive can i then Put the game ID in and say co-op. Here we go. Thank you. Right. I feel like this might be a bit redundant because it looks like a lot of rounds to me, even on hard, to even presume you might have beaten the machine. Wrong. Right. Wrong. 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 No. <laughs> Not too far behind. If we could have done it without the fourth guess and the last two questions, that would have been all right. Yeah, I picked competitive. That's why that button won there. Yeah, the machine The machine just gave I was taking so long that the machine just gave up and said that I could have it. No, we, lo we lost that one. But we got a win on the... We won the daily challenge, didn't we? Didn't we get that one ahead? I can't remember. We won one at least. But there we go. That's, that's a sampling. Oh, the screen was never up for any of that. But yeah, I didn't I didn't beat the machine. It did it in uh, two rounds and nine questions. Three rounds and nine questions. Thanks, Rach. Not four rounds and eleven like I did it in. But there we go. That's that's a few different like modes. If I can get the screen up, I can show you. I've I've um I didn't realise I hadn't changed the angle. But yeah, you pop your, in case this is the first one you've seen, I do apologise because you've only seen me head in hands struggling. <laughs> but hey, that's that's sometimes logic games. Do you find head in hands struggling fun? Then hey, you might enjoy logic games. There you go. It did it in uh, three rounds, nine questions. So yeah, without that bottom line, without the two, three, two bit, it managed to do it. So that's, yeah, it's, it's not too far away. I think the machine should give me a bit of credit there. But as we saw earlier, so that is, you see the setup there, it's still just five verifiers and like an answer card for each of them. That's classic mode. It's hard difficulty. The difficulty is determining the difficulty of the verifiers themselves. So there's still five of them, but they come from further back where they get harder and harder and more and more obtuse. They're still helpful, but it's maybe not as apparent what they're doing. But extreme mode makes it so there is two verifiers, each with the same answer card. So harder, but surely if you get a right answer, that means that it's right on both verifiers. But if on hard difficulty, that seems like it would be it would be so hard to determine anything. So that's um, that's extreme mode. Nightmare mode, whichever difficulty you're doing, means that 
you get five verifiers and five answer cards. You don't know which applies to which. At this stage, I cannot imagine playing it on that kind of difficulty. That is far behind, far behind, I can't even say the word, beyond. So certainly Nightmare Mode is uh, way past my ability at the moment. But yeah, there is tons. Oh, there's a printable challenge bank here as well. So uh, yeah, if you, if you didn't want to need the internet or a device or something to play a load of puzzles. There is a, a PDF of a load of challenges in this as well, but there's a new one every day. There's a bank of apparently millions you know, generated on the website. You can choose your mode of the three we just saw, choose how easy or hard you want the verifiers to be and choose how many you want. Like that's another thing I'm not sure. Does fewer verifiers make it easier because there are just fewer variables going about? Maybe not. Oh, the the thing, if you click, um, if you think the verifier is wrong, it takes you to this quite helpful PDF that uh, is reminding you about the kind of verifiers we just saw. So that one there that's like saying a specific color is equal to one. If you test blue one and it says false, it doesn't necessarily mean that blue isn't one because the card might not have even been looking at blue. The card might only be looking at yellow and it's just going to give you a right or wrong based on whether yellow is one or not. It's, it's looking at one of the colors and not giving you any information about the other two colors. Same as the one for that a specific color is even or odd. It's just looking at one of the colors and yeah, you can't let its answers for the other colors influence like what the final number is going to be. So that's like, it's a... A nice little thing there, because you might think, you might make some assumptions based on those more difficult things, and they're not going to lead you anywhere. But yeah, it is basically telling, it, it is them telling you that, no, the machine is not wrong. If you think it is, it is not, it's because probably you have uh, misinterpreted the answers from one of the verifiers. But there we go. There is, I, th I think, I don't know. I, I don't think I was as, as bad at it. Uh, live as I was uh, dreading I was going to be. I wasn't as good as I was hoping I was going to be, but hey, <laughs> somewhere in those things, I hope it's given you some idea of uh, Turing Machine. Maybe we'll do some more one day, but maybe we'll go back to another Logic game. Maybe we'll do some uh, Search for Planet X or something at some point. I think I did do a playthrough when it came out, right, but it's been a while. Fewer verifies me and getting the answer quicker, typically. Yeah, I could see that, because you, you, you've just got less like it's it's got to come up with an answer based on fewer things hasn't it so you should be able to come up with the answer in fewer guesses but there we go that is some turing machine i am going to be back check social media and stuff on uh, monday and i'll post what i'm going to be doing next week uh, there is going to be in the next couple of weeks there's going to be some kind of uh anyway, top 10 anticipated of 2023 there's going to be Potentially, I can't remember what's next in the vote. I think it's Starship Captains is potentially the next thing up in the vote. But hey, something else could have gotten a vote. In uh, the meantime, it could be Final Girl. It could be Paperback Adventures. It uh, could be Frostpunk. Uh, but yes, there's, there's plenty of uh, good games on the horizon. It's just uh, when's the time to do it all. Like, I've, I've really enjoyed this week because... Uh, I, I knew how to play these games ahead of time, and uh, it helps that, what's it been? Hadrian's Wall, Heat, and Turing Machine. I love all of those games, massively. I mean, you can't really compare things like uh, Hadrian's Wall because I've played it for about 18 months now, rather than these newcomers. But yeah, they've, they've all been absolutely fantastic. I mean, even the look of Nightmare Mode looks horrifying, which I suppose it should be. It's living up to its name. But yeah, I can't imagine where I would even start with that kind of thing. It would be cool to be good enough at it to be able to do those, though. Uh, but yeah, I post the schedule on Monday. And uh, yeah, you can you can see things coming up on, uh, on patreon.com slash slickdrips. It's how I'm able... To, it's the, the funding that makes it possible for me to be here. Or you could uh, tip me on Kofi, which I've just realised has managed to move off the screen a bit uh, but thank you so much for watching or commenting or thumbs up in whatever you do however you do it thank you very much for being here and i will see you for some more gaming next week have a great weekend hope you get some gaming done in it and uh, yeah i'll see you next week everyone bye 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 <laughs>